Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today we're going to be talking about some natural flea repellents for your dogs and your cats. So let's get started. I guess I should say a lot of these methods are going to work well for your other animals too, you know, your chickens and so on, depending on how you use them and the situation you've got going on. And first what I want to talk about is the homemade natural flea powder. Now in this one I only have three ingredients. Uh, I don't need to make any right away so I'm not going to be showing you how I make it but it's super simple. Um, in this one I have diatomaceous earth, I have equal parts, uh, yarrow that I powdered up, and let's see, oh and the neem powder equal parts of each of those and that is just what I have in here but I have some ideas for the next batch that I make this batch here has been very effective and I've had it made up for at least a year or two and it's worked really well but with all the more many herbs I have growing there's so many other great herbs besides yarrow yarrow is a great mosquito repellent but there are many more that maybe you're already growing that you can consider using in your flea powder when it comes to the diatomaceous earth, you can, you can take this flea powder and rub it directly onto your pet, sprinkle it on it and, and rub it onto them, but I never use it that way. What I like to do with it is I like to sprinkle it directly into the bedding and then rub it in because one of the issues you can have with diatomaceous earth, though it's really great for you, your animals and whatever to ingest because it will kill any parasites within the body, you don't want to be breathing it into the lungs. So I like to sprinkle the powder directly onto the bed and then rub it into the bed really good and work it down into the fibers. The diatomaceous earth in the flea powder is going to cut up and kill any of the bugs and the eggs and any of that kind of stuff. That is how diatomaceous earth works on parasites and you know, intestinal worms or fleas or any kind of bug. Uh, that is also why you have to be careful though in using it in your garden and how you use it. You don't want to just be sprinkling it everywhere and let the dust fly in because if you got honeybees coming into your garden, it can harm them too. So it's something I would only use directly on the top of the soil, not sprinkled onto the plants themselves. But uh, so you know, but it is a great it is great for killing pests and stuff. But just have to be careful how you use it as far as that. Neem powder is very safe all the way around. It can also be ingested, though it has a very bitter taste. So I don't worry so much about that. Um, but you might want to do some more looking into it for yourself. Uh, yarrow, of course, is another very very safe one. And again, powdering it up using your electric coffee grinder is I find to be best for powdering it up herbs and things like that um, better than a blender personally that's what I found and I actually got that idea from Lisa Booker a long time ago and I think a couple other people mentioned it I've always just used my blender but the, the I find that the uh, the coffee grinder works better now for some other herbs that you can consider putting into your flea powder I'd recommend lavender flowers Again, all these should be powdered up first. Uh, peppermints, sage, thyme, but especially catnip. Catnip is said to work better than DEET at repelling fleas and mosquitoes as well. So some other ideas is to make a, even a catnip tea and use it as a spray which is what I have right here. This is partly what's in here. I have this bug spray recipe that I developed last year, um, last spring, for my plants. I have yet to use it on my dog, but I think it would work really good because of the herbs that I have in here. Because uh, garlic, it's got garlic in it, and uh, garlic greens at least, and it's a, that's another natural bug repellent. I'll go ahead and link to the bug spray recipe right up here. Uh, I do think it would be an excellent uh, alternative for any kind of like flea bath or anything. You can just spray it right onto your pet. I just haven't needed to use it yet because Cody hasn't had any fleas in quite some time. Uh, some other really great methods is also your homemade vinegar. You can put your homemade vinegar 
in a spray bottle like I do right here, just like you could do with the bug spray and spray it on your pet. Uh, I guarantee they will not like it. They don't like the smell of vinegar, but bugs do not like vinegar. But especially if you're using like a lavender, one of your, one of your homemade vinegars that you made out of lavender or any mint or anything that bugs really don't like, these are some really good options. Now, um, for bathing your pet, I recommend using uh, the tea tree soap, uh, the Dr. Bronner's tea tree soap. The lavender or the citrus would also be good, but the tea tree is going to be a little bit stronger. We know that bugs do not like tea tree, and so that is one really good option for for you know helping to get rid of fleas is bathing them regularly in one of those kind of natural soaps that have have one of those things in it, the lavender or the tea tree. <clears throat> um, now some other things that you can do is you can make your own uh, flea treatment that you put directly on your dog and I've used this many times. My favorite blend to use is a mix of cedar and lemon essential oils, uh, equal amounts. Put into a carrier oil, I recommend coconut oil in particular for this. Obviously you're going to have to melt it or keep it warm when you go to apply it to your pet. And you'll start from the back of the head and work down that line and then just kind of rub it into their uh, skin all over. Um, they, your, your pet may not care for the smell so much, especially of the citrus, but it's a, it, I, I love this blend because it smells really good together, makes your pet smell really good, but fleas absolutely do not like it. Now another option to consider is the tea tree oil, but I have read, uh, it's, I haven't read recently, but I read that pets can be very sensitive to the tea tree essential oil, so you need to be very careful how you use it. So I don't use this in that particular treatment. So you're just going to have to look that up and find out for yourself what you think is best. Uh, I, I highly recommend these two. And there's other essential oils you can use as well, but these are my two favorites. Again, back to the, the flea powder, I, I want to specify again, it's, it's one part to one part to one part. So let's say I'm going to use uh, any of my dried herbs. I'm going to, if I want to use a blend, I'm going to blend up enough to equal, let's say I want to make three cups of the powder. I want to blend up enough, powder up enough to make one cup of the powdered herbs. And then to that, add one cup of the neem powder and then one cup of the diatomaceous earth. And then blend that together really well. Put it in a large jar. This is the easiest way to blend it. I have a video showing, one of the last videos I did showing how I, I blend powders is my, uh, my mixed spice. I'll go ahead and link to that right up here. But you just put them in the jar and you shake them up really good. And uh, that's the easiest way to get it blended thoroughly and the quickest. And then put it in your jar. Now you can see right here in this particular jar, I've got one of these special lids that has the pop-up thing so I can sprinkle. Uh, I've heard that you can also use, if you're one to buy Parmesan cheese in a can, uh, you can use those and uh, put that on there. It will fit right on your regular mouth jars. There were some other ones I'd read about. Or you can even take your ball lids or peanut butter lid, put it on there and drill some holes into it. But I got a really good deal on these at, at a local store. They had this, this great deal that it, yeah, I got the jars, the little tiny jars with the lids for just like a couple dollars where the lids alone would have cost more than that had I bought them online somewhere. But anyway, a really great way to do that and just sprinkle it on, on the bed. Again, I, I recommend putting it into the bedding. Uh, other options you can do for washing your pet, which is not natural. So I've gone over all these natural re remedies. These are the things that I will use the most. But in the case of, let's say that you know your pet just has some really bad fleas and you're trying to do everything you can without having to buy the toxic flea treatment that you put on them, um, sometimes even that has to be a must because there's some really die hard fleas out there but I still recommend starting with these methods first but uh, I would say the next thing you go to before uh, resorting to the flea medication the expensive and toxic flea medication is get to yourself some Dawn dish liquid there's just something about that Dawn dish liquid that does better than any other kind of dish liquid 
at uh, removing grease and stuff like that, but what it also does and why it's very effective on fleas is if you bathe your dog in it, you don't need very much. I've had this bottle for years. <laughs> and you just work that when you give them a bath, work just a little dollop of it into their fur and down into their skin. And what it does is it actually strips the protective coating off of the fleas. That's what helps why just bathing your dog alone usually doesn't work because the fleas have a protective coating on them to, pr to keep them from drowning and all this kind of stuff. But what the Dawn does is it strips that right off of them. And the, the last time Cody had fleas, and I don't know where he got them, but uh, they, were, they were some tough ones. I gave him a bath in this and I just saw the fleas dropping right off of them in the tub. And then after that, I go with all the natural remedies. You know, I could spray them down with the, with the vinegar, uh, putting the powder into the bed. Also, but I'll, doing that, of course, after I wash all the bed in really well first to make sure I'm getting rid of all those aches. And in that case, it's also recommended, you know, if you're like me and you like to hang your laundry up to dry, if you do have a dryer though, one of the things I find really good that I like to use my dryer for is when it comes to washing pet bedding because the dryer is also going to make sure that those eggs and everything get killed and then the dryer will pull all the excess hair and stuff out of the bedding better than you can do just hanging up to dry so and then the heat from the dryer is going to kill anything that might still be alive in there so it's more than just washing it so in that case I do recommend using your dryer but if you don't have a dryer because you're completely off grid and you hang things up to dry you can you know hang it in the sun and then use your use the flea powder treatment and rub it into the bed really good let it get down into the fibers and uh, that will work wonders at killing off any fleas and bugs that are in there okay well that's all i got for today there's so many other natural ways that you can help repel and kill fleas on your pets that are also safe and inexpensive and i I am sure that I have quite a few followers out there that have some other methods that they may prefer, maybe some oils or herbs that they like to use better than what I've got listed here. So please go ahead and share with us in the comments down below so that everyone can see and read and learn from you as well. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching, take care, and God bless.